All right, how's it going guys? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, today we're going to be looking at some pixel art. So I've got another process video to take a look at. I'm going to talk you through uh, my process with uh, pixel art. So um, yeah, in a minute or two I'll press press play. We can take a look at it together and I'll talk you through my process. But the, uh, the purpose of this uh, originally then was that this is like a, a logo, some, some art to go with a, a side project I've got going on with my brother. So at the end of the video, um, I'll link you to a, uh, a video on our channel. So my brother and I were just doing um, kind of video blogs, kind of podcasts, vid vidcasts, I suppose, vidcasts. Yeah, let's call them that. Vidcast type videos of us chatting about beer, chatting about art. So obviously I'm really interested in art. He brews his own beer. Um, so we thought, well, as a bit of a, a lockdown project, we'll, we'll bring the two together and, and talk about the two. So if you've got a, a shared interest with us, then um, yeah, check it out. I, hopefully, hopefully you'll like it. Um, he's really, really knowledgeable about beer. He's been brewing for about uh, 12 years. Um, yeah, he makes the delicious beers. But uh, anyway, so uh, on to the, the pixel art. Uh, yeah, I want to talk a bit more about the, um, the, the process for this and how to get set up making pixel art. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm using um, Photoshop. Uh, I've got a, a Wacom Cintiq uh, 22 that I talk a little bit about on another video. That's the, the review of the, the fully um, Jarvis arms that I used to, to support my screens. Um, so I'm in Photoshop. I'm going to set my um, image up at 200 uh, pixels by 200 pixels. So this is a square image so I mean you, you, you really you're going down very very small so then you can you can literally draw individual pixels and instead of using the brush I'm going to use the pencil tool so you right click or, or control click if you're using an apple right click the um, the brush icon on, the, on the, the left hand toolbar and then click the choose the pencil and you can take the size of the, the pencil right the way down to a single pixel so for the most part um, I'm going to be drawing individual pixels to get that, that classic pixel art look. Now, I, I love pixel art. I, I think that it's such a, a cool challenge to get as much detail into a, a tiny image as possible. Uh, so I'll talk, a bit, talk, talk you through kind of my process for making it and then about how to, to size it up as well. So I'm going to uh, change the scale of it so that it, we end up with a, a bigger image at the end because, I mean, 200 by 200 pixels isn't really good enough. It's certainly not good enough for print and it's going to look pretty poor on screens, you've got to zoom right in. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna resize it at the end so that it looks uh, looks a bit better and it's, it's more usable. Uh, so let's click play and we'll take a look at this uh, this video. So I mean, as, at the start then, you can see that I'm using, uh, I've got my, it's a, it's a circular image. I've got a, a good reference to go from um, and it gives us this kind of, well, it's split in two, so it's almost like a kind of mirror image almost, I suppose. Uh, and I'm working up to the, the final image, which is of this barley field. Um, as I said, it's, it's to go with my uh, project with my brother to get people actually thinking about beer when they, uh, when they look at the image. And my brother and I kind of talk through this process in this other video, so I'll not talk too much about that. This is more about the actual art process. So I'm, I'm blocking in my main colors. I've got my two sort of hemispheres of this image here. Um, and you can see me now working away the sky to get that kind of basic gradient that we're going to blend in later on. And we've got this ear of barley that kind of forms the, the main focal point in the, in the foreground. I'm blocking in those colours for the, uh, the sunset in the background. And at some point we'll actually allow that to kind of, yeah, there we go. It's going to bleed into the, um, to the actual uh, the ground at the horizon there. So we've got the, uh, yeah, the horizon. We're now choosing our colours to, to kind of allow that that light to overlap with the ground and then it's just sprung forward so uh, you can see me now building in the, uh, the, the the detail into that ear of barley at the front and I've, I've tried to make this kind of chaotic look um, because I mean we've got this this field of, of grains uh, with all the strands going everywhere and it kind of it belies what I really like about pixel art, which is that it's usually really neat and you get these hard edges and everything's kind of cell shaded. So, so you get kind of, you don't really blend in that traditional way that you've got that limited color palette that allows you to, to, to blend gradients differently. So you get kind of hard edges. But for me, that wasn't quite working. I had a couple of goes at this. Um, so I'm now I'm just kind of building up patterns and areas of interest really um, in, in a bit of a chaotic way because I mean look, looking at the, the source image 
Um, you look at a, a field of, of barley around this sort of time of year and it's just chaos. There's strands of, of blades of grass and, and, and um, barley going everywhere. So I was trying to replicate that. So I kind of eventually kind of get control of the image and I'm now just building up. I've got my base colors and I'm finding patterns as much as I can, starting mainly with the, um, with, the sh with the shadows. I picked a range of different tones there. So with pixel art, you're picking individual colors. At the moment, I've got my pen pressure set to 100% um, opacity. So there's no pressure sensitivity for opacity. I'll change to that soon so that I can build up more colors. In fact, I've, I have done that now, but originally I was just blocking in as much as I could um, trying to build up interest and choosing individual colors. You can see there's that area of warm colors around the sort of the bottom edge. So it's a bit warmer than the rest that stands out for me with that sort of more, uh, we've got a bit more red in the mix. And then I've turned my pen pressure onto um, opacity. So, well, sorry, the, the opacity is on pen pressure sensitivity. So then I can build up even more interest into the image. I've started with my, my base colors, then I put my shading in and now I'm putting in some highlights over the top. And this is when having your pen pressure, your, your opacity set to pen pressure is more useful because then you can actually start to develop much more tonality in it. So there's, there's more variability in the tones, um, which really I, th I think it helps add to that sort of chaotic look to the um, to the feel down the bottom. Now I've, I've switched to a slight, I've, I've made my brush a bit larger, so I'm not just doing individual pixels to be able to blend that sky in, start to blend the, the colors around that sunset in the background as well, um, before then uh, changing the size down a little bit smaller. So I'm still a bit, a, a bit smaller than a single pixel, sorry, a bit larger than a single pixel there. So what I'm trying to do with the clouds now is kind of juxtapose that with the, the chaotic look of the, the actual field to try and get a bit more order to it. So I'm trying to keep my, my edges a little bit harder. Um, I've still got my, my um, opacity set to pen pressure here. And you can see, I've, yeah, I've used the, the layer was, it needed to move back down the, uh, the image there because those clouds are over the top of the, uh, the, uh, that strand of barley. But I've corrected for that. And now I'm just building up those... Um, those sort of tones with the uh, um, within the clouds there, thinking about trying to keep those edges as hard as possible because that's as I said that's something I really like about pixel art that you can you can build up quite hard edges and trying to build in some warmer tones within the clouds there and just trying to create some interest. Thinking about well, I want to move the the viewer's eye around the image, really sort of juxtaposing the sort of the quite ordered look of the clouds that's very peaceful. Um, I didn't quite capture the sort of the hard edges that I wanted, if I'm honest, because and I think that's probably because I kept my, my pen pressure set to, uh, sorry, my opacity set, set to pen pressure for the for the majority of those clouds there. I think if I did this again, I'd try and, and keep the opacity off for a little bit longer to develop some harder lines. You can see me trying to work in some edges there sort of retrospectively now, adding a bit more interest to the clouds. Um, before I'm, I'm then going to actually start to, to resize the image. Um, now, personally, I prefer to then switch into um, Adobe Illustrator to, to resize the image. I find that that keeps things a bit crisper. There's only so far you can push it, really, because it's such a small image. Um, yeah, you can see me trying to... I want to, to lead the viewer's eye around the image with this sort of outer white circle, and for me, it wasn't working on this small scale. So in a moment, I'll switch to um, Adobe Illustrator, resize it, copy and paste it back into Adobe Photoshop before I can then um, rework the image. So now it's been resized. It's much more closer to, to print quality now. Um, I think we're, we're looking at about sort of 3000 by 3000 pixels, which allows me to then use the, um, the this sort of select tool. So I can select the um, that circle I've just created to give us that nice clean edge. There you go. You can see that now we've got that, that nice pixel art look, but we're still able to get that clean edge, which I think just brings the viewer's eye into the image rather than it straying around the outside. And that circle that I've just added, that, do, that, that to me, that serves the same purpose. Um, the overall image, I mean, I'm really happy with it. I'm now adding in the, uh, the text for the logo. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that because as, as I kind of rearrange the text, we're getting to a point where um, I'm going to just put the, the finishing touches to it. So I add another layer right over the top and I changed the, the layer blending mode to um, uh, color dodge. 
So I can use color dodge and then I, I, I use a, a big, um, use the, the soft round brush with really um, low, sort of turn the hardness all the way down. Um, I was gonna say low opacity, but actually I, I draw onto the layer first uh, just with a, a sort of an orange tone, just to try and add to that sort of sunset to add a little bit of a lighting effect there that you'll see me putting that on in a moment. For me, that's kind of the finishing touches. Um, I, do, I do add a little bit of a, a black background to that text in the middle, um, just by rasterizing the, the, the font, you can then select the, the whole thing um, and just expand the selection a little bit, put a layer behind it and add, add a little black background to that font. I really like that, that font effect. It's probably the only one that I use really. I don't do an awful lot else with, um, with fonts that, other than that. Uh, there we go, yeah, you can just see me add that in now. Um, and then, yeah, then I'm gonna add that, that layer in the, with the blending mode um, set to, here we go, set to, um, uh, color, color dodge, just to add that little lighting effect, which for me just adds that finishing touch, really, just to, to really accentuate the way that the, the sunset's just playing on that whole image, and it kind of brings the whole thing together. As I said, just, just thinking about how we lead the viewer's eye around the, um, around the piece. Um, I've, I've also made that, that outer white circle a little bit transparent as well, just so it doesn't detract too much from the image. And for me, yeah, I'm really happy with that. I think that if I were to do this again, I think I'd, I'd think more about how I create um, harder, more well-defined shapes. I think it was challenging with the, um, with the barley field itself, but perhaps with the, the clouds, I could have created some more well-defined shapes there because that's, that's something I really like about pixel art. But anyway, so uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching. That's my pixel art. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm really grateful to everyone who's uh, subscribed to the channel and been liking videos. I've seen some real growth over the last few uh, few days to weeks. Uh, so yeah, thank you for that. If, you, if you're a new subscriber, I hope you've enjoyed this. And um, yeah, I'm going to leave you guys to it. Please, if, the, if this is your first watch of one of my videos, give us a, a like and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be putting loads more out there. And now I'm going to cut you to um, a link to, to my other channel with my brother, because that's, that's a really cool project that we're enjoying together. So yeah, check that out and uh, give us some love over there. That'd be great. Thanks for watching.